Now we got ourselves here. We're back in the Castro Wild yet again. But now that we can get across this swamp now with the dash attack. We're also going to talk to a new enemy type that we saw in the golden variant, Ropes. These guys are snakes. And if they come into contact in their line of sight, they will attack you on head on. So bear that in mind. But also, I know uh, P hats will show up here also as well, but we know how to take care of them. All we have to do is basically knock them out of the air and booyah! But we want to make sure to keep our Pegasus boots on hand. Because we're going to need them to get through this area. Now this area is kind of a bit of a maze. It's not too difficult to master. But there's again a lot of water areas around here that are too deep for you to walk in. And like I said before, you don't have the, uh, the, the ability to swim yet. So any area that's a deep blue water, you can't walk in. So, bear that in mind. But there is, like, um, two swordsmen are here. Yeah, there's kind of like a secret swordsman in this world. That basically will give you the secret techniques above the already ones you get from Swiftblade. Hey. Hmm. Now, that's one nasty looking statue. That eye has such an evil glower to it. Yeah, we now have induction to eye gores, and we're going to have to attack those guys. But we don't have the ability to do so just yet. What do you guys say? Come on, shoot me! There we go. I want to sell you arrows, but you don't have a bow. Come back later. And we can fuse with this guy, too, so let's go fuse with him, business scrub. And what do we get? Ah, place in the Minish Woods that now opens up to us. Nice. I guess we'll have to head back there once we can. Look at that, perfect fit. That means good luck for us. I guess so. But there's also this introduction of a particular element that this uh, particular side of the game gives you. It is basically, you're going to have to find a specific keystone in the world. And if you don't find it, you can't basically progress with the story. We go here. Uh, ow. Come on. There we go. There we go. And, uh, oh, there's a portal right here. Let's go grab it. Now, the portal is small. We want to go through this little doorway right here. And now we got ourselves a lily pad. We know what to do with lily pads. Is that we must basically charge up our little gust jar. And push ourselves forward. Forward, forward. And push up. Watch out for these flowers. They don't hurt you, but they block your path with a slight annoyance. And I love the detail of the grass. It's like, you know, it's like this little tiny area that you basically couldn't see it. From a big perspective, but you can see it really well in the, in the small version. Which again, I like details like that. We come up and down here, and we have a little mini boss, little be beetle creatures. The blue variants. Our first time seeing these guys. All they are is that they're basically more wild. They don't really have a pathway or anything, but they just basically have more health, and that's about it. And we get ourselves the bow. Now you can take out enemies from afar. So now we have our new item, the bow, and you start with 30 arrows. I'd like to say, you know, uh, Link to the Past, where you start off with like, you know, 30 arrows as well. But man, you can start with a quiver with only 10 arrows and you had to grab more, that'd be annoying. But with that said, I believe there is a fairy, a great fairy, that you can come access to, and I think it increases your arrow count. I want to say yes. But, you know, I can always be wrong on that front. You never know. I've, it's been a, it's been over three years since I've played this game. <laughs> now with our bow in hand, we can now access the entirety of this area for the moment. Not fully, though. There is a fit of spots that require you to basically have the ability to swim in this uh, dungeon area. And I basically call this place a dungeon because this is exactly what it is. But with the new bow in hand, we can now access these Igors. Now, I believe I missed a cave somewhere that was over here. No, I can't go into that one. It's down there. Yeah, it's down there. We'll have to get that later. All right, we come down here, and we have to shoot these guys in the eye. Yeah, the Igors have come to life. It takes about, I think, four? Yeah, four arrows. 
But you get 5 arrows in the storm in your quiver! Huzzah! Yeah, the bow and arrow basically gives you a random quiver. It's like, here you go! Quiver! We'll get those uh, to- we just give those to anyone who gets a bow. You automatically get a quiver for your troubles. So we need to glide across here very slowly and get over this blue patch of water. Because we can't use this- we can't swim yet, which is very annoying. But once we have the ability to swim, you know, a lot of stuff opens up to us in this particular spot initially. But bear in mind, there might be a few secrets you might want to find. Some shortcuts here and there. Oh, here we go. Here's this. Right here, we push this uh, grave open. And we get an introduction to a dungeon master, a little blade master here. You got a piece of heart? That's the first thing you grab, is the piece of heart. Though my body may perish, I'm still the true master of swordsman of Hyrule. Swift Blade the first, spirit of the swordsman. If you train with me, I will teach you skills that are out of this world. Hmm? It seems you are not ready to train with me. Come back when you have all seven tiger skulls. Only then I'll teach you the true master of blade weapon. Yep. So, there's something for us to look forward to later on. Oh, here we go. All right, cool. We're making our way across. Here's one of those windstones. Hey, hey that central bar crow. There's none of those symbols. You know, it still rattles me. Yeah, me too. It's getting kind of annoying. We haven't found the item to use that with. There's a rock right there that allows us to get to a shortcut back to the middle of the area. But we need to get ourselves to a particular few keystones. If you catch my drift. And these keystones are plot important. Which is like the only time they are, really, too. Like, it only... Uh, like, it's weird how the... Uh, they're called the golden keystones. But they don't really do very much. They open up a pathway that's required for you to do. But other than that, though, they do absolutely nothing. Keystone piece! Oh, boy! And there's those 20 like lights I saw earlier. I almost fell for that trap. But hey, they don't need to drop their rupee. You basically grab their antenna. It's kind of gruesome. <laughs> Alright, we're going to this dungeon right here. Thank goodness for that tiger scroll that we can break pots. That's to get around these obstacles with ease. So we're now in some type of ruins here. This area is a little annoying. Only because we get an introduction to a mini boss and a recurring boss at that. A chest! <gasps> Hmm, so a guardian is protecting that treasure. Take care while fighting it. This is the Dark Knight. Or basically what we consider to be in proper terms, the Dark Knight. These guys are very defensive in the front, and you can't hurt them from the front. You must hit them from their back. But getting around to their back is a little tedious after a while. You have to be very fast on them. You gotta hit them so they basically block you around, and you gotta get around them. But they're fast on their feet, though. And it's not the only time we're gonna be seeing these guys. Nope, these guys are gonna be annoying. Because there's ver different variants of them. Like, there's golden, black versions, silver versions, red versions. Just all different types of versions of this guy. Now, these Dark Knights do take the form of the Wind Waker style of Dark Knights. So, bear that in mind. Except for the fact they're not technically dogs. The more of, you know, dark humans, technically. And you got a keystone piece, a golden one of that. Our first plot important item. We have to find two more in this area in order to actually get into the next area of the game. Where the wind element is basically presumed to be. So we need to go ourselves around and basically find these other two. Let's see if we go down here a bit. Cross over here. Oh, we've already been over here, though. Back up here. Need to go up this way. Back over this way and come down over... Nope, not up there. We go over here. This allows us to get over here and now I guess... Ow! Yeah, those little br these little brines are going to hurt you if you hit them, so watch out for that. We go like that. The Igors are not not tart at all. And they don't use them very much. Only in very spare moments they use them. 
They're kind of like ancient guardians in that regard. Something that is just there. Right, let's go up here. Let me get ourselves another chest which contains another golden keystone piece. Huzzah. Alrighty. Now we got that out of the way. This is all we need to do up here. Now we need to head, now we need to head south to the bottom of the map. Luckily, though, we've unlocked that area, so we don't have to do the whole tedious workaround like we did before. And so let's head down that way, like a like a so. Drop down right here. Hey, Keystone Peach! Thank goodness. Definitely gonna need him, because we're definitely gonna have a lot of fusions later on. Oh yeah, we have to go over here. We come down right here. We're gonna take out another Igor. We got a bow here. And you got another pea hat. Of course there is. Hey, you! Don't like you. <laughs> Go fly somewhere else. <laughs> and the Igor Igors are like, ow! That was my eye you hit me with. Now I'm gonna chase you down. No worries. You know, uh, get some clear eye for you. That'll do the trick, won't it? We come around here, we have another wind thing. Oh look at that! A minish door. Yeah, we're not gonna be seeing that thing for quite a while. Not until we get to find the ability to swim. Push this rock over like so. We go into here. And we get ourselves the third and final keystone piece of this area. Now we want to now we have to get these things because there is a particular statue at the very end of this room. Uh, and these statues will not let you pass through to the next area unless you basically make them happy. Then we have here our three keystone pieces, and again, these are all plot relevant. Very annoying on a certain occasion. Like it feels like it's a pace breaker because this only this always only happens twice, and actually it only happens with this particular with this particular quest in its own right. <clears throat> because the next dungeon we go into after this one doesn't deal with it, so I feel like this is something that was late in the development. Or basically, it means that this was designed in a way to basically be plot relevant uh, to it. And also, the manga also brings this up, too. About the Kingstone fusions with this particular tribe, the Wind Tribe here. Alright, we're out of the way, let's go. Off to the Wind Ruins we go. And now we have the deduction of more... Uh, basically, again, that's like a, all these areas kind of feel like they're miniature dungeons. Basically, they allow you to use all multiple items to get secrets and everything, and it's all up to you to find them all. Kingstone Peace! Man, we're gonna collect a lot of these. Man, we're gonna have a lot of fusion capabilities once we get back in town. So, we got ourselves here. These are, like, uh, the statues. These little statues. Gotta remember these names here. But these things are, like, uh... Man, I, I know they're the same from uh, Ocarina of Time. I just can't put my name on them. But these things are a livable machine. They are they only activate once they have a light and when they light their fire. So unfortunately we can't move them. And that one will activate unless we unless there's a light inside. Hmm. Maybe this hole will give us information about it. First I'm gonna rob you blind. You got the keystone piece. These soldier statues here were built by the Mish ages ago to help humans. It's kind of a secret, but there's a switch inside that turns them on or off. I see. So, we can see that on their shield they've got steps on them. So we walk up in here. We can activate them on. And now that they're on, they'll react to humans next by. So we better do that and basically get ourselves forward or not. These little statues. Yeah, yeah, here are you. Statue, stone statues. Oh, I dropped the heart. Thanks. I definitely needed that heart. This is also a good area to grind to because there's a lot of grass here too. So if you want to get some keystone drops, this might be a good spot to do if you have the pickle light on you. But like I said, just go to the field of grinding that you saw earlier in the Timber Highlands. That will basically be the best spot to grind stuff into. Can we come up here? We are stuck in a required fight of these Tektites. There we go. And, uh, oh yeah, there's another spot here. Uh, remind them, remember this for later, because this is actually a little bit of a 
There's a keystone fusion in the particular area here that activates this little plot of dirt. But we don't have the fusion way of doing that just yet. Or, or do we? We can go over here. And basically we can't, and also with the minish size, we can't jump off walls. You can only go up and down fine, which is a slight annoyance. Let's see here. I think that's it there. I think we go down this way. I think there's a cave right here. A slight cave with our little good buddies, the flies. Oh! You cursed flies! Why don't you die? Thank you. I'll kill every every fly and imaginable here. Yeah, if this place has a piece of heart for us. We definitely need those. If we really want to increase our hearts to the maximum level, we're going to have to. Though to be fair, this game has the hardest requirement to get the heart piece. You get a full row of hearts and everything, just because. You need to do the gotcha machine and collect all the statues. I myself, I think I've done it once. But I think that was on the Wii U version when I had when I initially recorded this game a long time ago. No, I don't say I say three years ago is a long time ago, but you know what? Time keeps on slipping and beyond us, you know. It keeps slipping us into the future. <laughs> but um But like I said, there is like again, you're gonna have to it, it becomes into a grindathon. It's almost like, you know, those free to play games, you know, with the RPGs and everything. Where, like, you level up, like, once, and you have already have, like, all these materials that you can max level yourself, but then you have to ascend. Just to guess so you can grind up even higher. I kind of hate those types of, uh, games in a certain degree. Like, I'm saying about that Genshin Impact. I've been playing a lot of it lately. Like, I've got myself back into it after being off it for, like, a few years. And I continue myself and continue on the story. But I feel like it's kind of dumb when, like, you can level up your character to a max of level 20. But then you're going to have to, uh, grind for materials so they can ascend to higher planes. Like, what's not stopping me from basically having the character to go higher in level? Like, I can ascend, I can assume that basically if you try to ascend, you know, I would say that's for weapons. <coughs> that makes the weapons better. But I say the character shouldn't have to ascend. Because I'll tell you right now, you don't level up characters in this game in Genshin Impact like you do in, uh, other game RPGs. Like... Once you base, because you can, you can easily get to level 20, because let's be frank here, how that game works is the gotcha machine, you get spawned to get new, uh, new heroes to play with and everything, and they all suck at level 20. And you have characters who are probably like to level 60 or 80. And you have to ascend them. But once you get them ascended, you know, they, they, they stay there at level 20, but you have to send them again, then you have all these materials, and you get yourself two max levels. So, what you want to do here is basically turn off these statues. At least one of them. You want to turn off the one that's actually blocking the doorway to the left. Because if you get near to him as a human, it will run away. We don't want it to run away. We want to turn this one off because we don't want this to move. We come up here, and now we can take out these guys out. We're gonna take you guys out one way or the other. Yeah! Take that, you! Hey! There you go! Come on, you! Yeah, yeah! I want you to die, I want you to die. It's good to actually kill these ones off, because they open up a pathway with a couple of chests! I'm all for basically getting more treasure if you catch my drift. Especially if I can get you an impact. I mean, get you an impact, there's like a chest like every five feet. <laughs> so, and it's like, oh, I gotta find more stuff to do. No. Let's see, I go right here. Now with the rock breaker, we can just go right here and... Da -da 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 -da. Oh my goodness, look at all those keystones. Yes, three of them! Heck yeah. Because a particular character that's a fan favorite amongst the Japanese community, and a favorite of... of Eiji Anuma, is basically in this game, and his, uh, in order to get his uh, special friendship with him, is that... He required, I think, all of him and his brothers basically require him to get green stone, green keystone fusions. So you want to have as much green as you can. So I think the best way of... See, those guys can't hide them anymore. <laughs> they can't hide enough to rock if they tried. Heck yeah. 
They can't hide from me anymore. Pegasus Boots makes that thing trivial. Now we're getting all kinds of keystones now. Goodness. Well, here we are, folks, at our next destination. Welcome to our next level, the Wind Fortress. Let's go in. 